We're live. Welcome everyone to week two of the Pokeballs podcast. I'm your one of your hosts, Lee or Cyrus, and joined by my good friend Scott. Also, S9 Vibe is his handle online. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing good, mate. Excited for another podcast. I think people thank enjoyed the well. first one. Yeah, it was a really nice, so really nice feedback for the people. Thank you for watching it. For stars, yeah. anyone that watched it all the way through. We've got 12 mm. plays on Spotify as well. So, you know, Ooh. it's not bad. It's not bad. Hitting the dizzy heights. Hitting on dizzy heights for Spotify. <laughs> so. No, big thank you. Big shout out to everyone that uh, obviously listened last week, tuned in and commented and left all that nice feedback. It was, uh, it's really great to hear. And uh, hopefully as we go forward, we'll keep giving you good, good podcasts and all that good stuff. Yeah. So what have you been up to this week, mate? I've been doing some, a lot of practice for AUIC, big mm-hmm. Pokemon tournament coming up for people that don't know. Um, that's it. Nice. You know, just other hobbies. I went bouldering today, but um very good. Oh, a bit of exercise. What about you? I've just come back from the just, pub. Just come back As from you the can pub. See, I'm wearing my pub. What, what happened at the pub? What happened? Newcastle United were playing Manchester United today, and uh, I I did have to make a a quick trip down to watch the match, um, and uh, it was a good result, mate. It was a good day. And, fantastic uh, yeah. result. Fantastic. Old Roy, <laughs> old Roy come back. What's <laughs> an easy win against Leicester? We actually played really well, so. It's all anyway. good, all good, good results today. Anyway, this is not a football yeah, podcast, a football but that podcast. is my. I'm going to sneak it in because I'm very happy today. Obviously, oh, I actually really like that. Just want a quick mention is I wasn't sure about that kit, but looking at it on you now, actually, it's really nice. It's a, such a nice kit. The Saudi really colours, really like yeah, it is yeah. I know there's a lot of. <sighs> it's 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 a sensitive subject, but it is a very nice kit. If we just take it everything else away and just say it's a green and white kit nice. which we've had green and white kits in the past so we have and i know what it i know what it represents and um, but the kit itself is really nice and i do like it and i thought i'm gonna buy the away i don't generally buy the away kits but uh, this year i did and uh, i do like it it's a little snug around the arms but i don't know whether that's just because all like a little bit of, uh, like uh, uh, well thank you mate I'm, I'm pleased. They're all like that. We'll just they're say it's all, nothing. No, no, no they're all no. Seriously, nothing mine are like that as well because they're meant mm. to be tight. It's a football. Anyway, enough like football more. talk. Yes. Um, um, other than that, mate, this week uh, being deep in the terror raid battles, a new seven star terror raid battle for Samurott, and it was a bit of a doozy. Uh, obviously, a, really a difficult raid to begin with because I don't think it was easy for people to figure out how to kind of beat the samurai and i feel like at that very initial stage when it dropped a lot of people were left a bit like oh my god how are we going to deal with this thing um i think it's definitely been one of the harder ones since you know since what's the hardest one i think people struggled with the greninja one a little bit greninja one was difficult because the screen went up quite early on in that one and greninja (laughs) did hit pretty hard i think the thing with the samurai is obviously the focus energy um yeah turn zero before the the raid even starts um and i had already in a, like i put the the preview article up um in the middle of the week and did go over cloister in that build and i subsequently posted about the um the uh, shell armor ability being something if we suspected the focus energy that could be useful against it so that's what it kind of turned out to be and that's what i kind of fell back on and it worked out brilliantly and then the taurus build was mentioned on that video actually the video i dropped like an hour after the event went live and then there was a comment on there from uh brandon uh, one of our viewers said about the taurus build he'd been using since the raid dropped uh, so he's probably the first person to actually use that and then i tested it the next morning because as you know, mate, uh, when these raid events go live, it's like stupid o'clock in the morning in the UK. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's um, that's another story, anyway. So I was super tired after recording those. I had work the next morning, so I had to try and get like a few hours sleep. Went to bed, woke up the next morning, tested it first thing, and uh, the Taurus bill works really great. So I was like, I want to share this with the community, put that up, and uh, they're really two really solid builds. But subsequently, since then, there's been a bunch of builds that people have come out with and seem to be, uh, it seems to be a easy raid to do once you know how to kind of deal with it. Um, so, mm-hmm. but that's, that's pretty much what I've been doing the latter part of this week. 
um, and managed to get a bit of luck as well with the shiny Oshawa as well. I did the shiny hunt oh, for it and I got it on 40, the 49, video. 49 eggs, mate. 49 eggs, which beats the pants off any of the other ones I've tried. Um, yeah. Which I normally give up on a little bit because I think by the time I get it, it's way too late. It's not relevant anymore, but I've been able to do it this time around. So that was pretty nice. But other than that, mate, and then dropping in and out of the regional that's been going on this weekend and doing a little bit of practice. So that's my week. And I've probably taken up half the podcast just to explain that. So sorry, man. But um, no, that's fine. Um, yeah. What do you want to talk about first? Uh, I was going to mention there was, there's been quite a lot happening this past week, a lot mm. happening um, in, in the Pokemon world. Uh, the first thing I was going to mention is the uh, the return of in live local events are coming back to play Pokemon, which is it's about huge time, thing. baby. <laughs> Jesus, it's a huge like... thing, mate. It's a huge thing, right? It's, it makes um... the game so much more fun. Yeah, it's so it boring does. when you can't do locals. I know. Mm. I don't know, you know, they maybe change the point structure. They don't count towards day one invites or whatever. I don't care, but it's just better for practice. You get to see your friends more often and it makes you more invested in the season yeah. when you can only really go to like one regional because it costs us so much money in because you have to, you know, like five, six hundred quid to go to regional. Even in the UK is ridiculous, right? It's so, so expensive now. Yeah. You know, Especially like, with like local, you need the locals. Yeah, you do. And the local scene is like any local scene. If you play competitively, either TCG, VG, whatever, or anything like even Smash and yeah. stuff. Look yeah, at yeah. Like Smash like locals are massive for that. Yeah. So it's really and important it's, to help. Yeah, it's like your baseline, right? Of like yeah, yeah, yeah. building your community friends, you're building your kind of experience for that season, and it just kind of propels you into the bigger events. And it, I always think as well, mate. It all I always go back to if I go into tournaments, which I have done recently, like the two regionals that we I've played in recently. Liverpool and then Utrecht. Um, I've went into those super cold. I haven't had much preparation, but I've played no tournaments beforehand and I hate doing that. I always feel like if I've got like, locals are really good for that just tournament, raw tournament experience to feel like, okay, I know what I'm doing. I've learned a bunch. It's best to free today. practice. You can't get yeah. that anywhere else. And you against real people yes. that are playing for something. There's something on the line and it's actually, you know, it is, it is the best you can get like practice wise outside of like actually just going to the events themselves so and um, you're not paying 60 pounds to play <coughs> this is very true this is very true very very true so uh, so april as of now as of when this video is going live april will be when tcg locals will be returning vg is going to be a little bit longer it's going to be into may which is a little bit sad but i mean at least they're coming back right but it will be a little bit later on um i think then, vgc i hope there's Pokemon Goes Go Challenge, well, yeah. Well. yeah, which is pretty, which is awesome for that Wild, scene as yeah. well, because that is just a scene that keeps on growing all the time, and it's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I do have, I do still believe that the Go community, the competitive community in Go, is eventually going to surpass VG TCG, and TC and VG are not going to be able to even compete with them. I think the Go community competitively is going to be the biggest thing in the future. Hot take. Well, do you want to, um, running on from that, you said there was yeah. quite a bit of drama with um, Pokemon Go this week. There was, actually, yeah. This is a you, good segue, mate. Yeah, do you Niantic. Wanna, do you wanna, do you Niantic. I actually, I've got no idea. I saw bits, people complaining on Reddit. Um, but yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, so I'm not like massively familiar with all of the drama, mm -hmm. but I understand it all. Um, okay. Niantic came out earlier this week as well, obviously. Um, with an adjustment to their pricing for remote raid passes and a limit on the remote raid passes as well. So, yeah, the raid passes will now, packs of three, as you can see here, are going to be 525 coins, which is a huge hike from what they were before price of single remote price uh, raid passes gone up to 195 coins. Again, another hike. And then the premium battle passes are going to be up to 250 coins. Now, it does appear on face value like it's just a total cash grab. And that's what my instant thought was. But when I talked to a friend who's very in the, the Go community, explained it to me. Um, he said it's kind of Niantic's way for getting people out again after COVID, after everything's kind of settled down now, getting people out and about playing Go properly, how it was originally oh, meant to, because so they changed. Them to not pay here. They don't want them to pay because they want them to go out. 
Yeah, was that their, and that their excuse. Well, that's their excuse, and they're, well, they're limiting how many raid passes you can use per day as well. So that is one of the things that, you know that is making people actually have to go out to these like you know exclusive events for exclusive legendaries because legendaries in Pokemon Go have always been very exclusive, like tied to certain events. And it does suck. I live in the middle of nowhere. So I literally have nothing. I have like, you remember, like the whole point of Go is to go out. And I mean, when Go come out, like yeah. people are out playing it everywhere. So I guess so it does make a lot of sense from their perspective. I mean, it's kind of half and half. One, they just want to do it as a cash grab. And two, this is also a good excuse to be like, get outside. So yeah, 100%. Like I do feel like it, there is a there is a cash grab in there amongst it all, but I think yeah, it is pretty much reverting back to the how the the game was meant to be played and and it keeps the legendary Pokemon more exclusive, which they should they should be. You know, if I get a legendary Pokemon, um, you know, I got I got Zash in at Worlds. Uh, if I hadn't been at Worlds, I wouldn't be able to get Zash in. Like I've seen, like you know, I've got one Pokestop and one gym around me. Like for you can walk miles. There's nothing else. I have to go to the local town to get anything else. So for me, it is a, a bigger deal. Like I've always had to go out and do it. The raid passes were great during lockdown. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I could go online. I could get access to these more exclusive legendaries that I wouldn't have had before. So I think like I can see where they're coming from. I, I don't know if I agree with it, but I guess for the good of the game, we'll see. Hopefully it's... I, uh, it, it, it works out well for everyone uh, in the end, but yeah, I don't think it was it was one of those things where it went down well in the community, as you can imagine. You know, like with with the price hike in general, it's not going to go down well with players. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anything when you're like not getting that. an improved service for something, but you're paying the same, you're paying more for the same thing that you've been you've been getting that like the last forever, however long, you know. And now you're having to pay more for it and mm -hmm. you're not getting anything increased. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's got cash grab written all over getting, it, but I know there's other reasons yeah. behind it, but whether or not those other reasons are just an excuse to do that or not, who knows? See, you know? I don't know. You know, I unfortunately don't have a lot of experience with go. Um, so yeah I, I can't really comment um but like you say the scene is growing um and you're right i mean vg is going to get left in the mud really compared to i think like, so. as we've talked about they might even get rid of it compared to like go i mean go center stage now yeah. like all the events you know i don't know if they'll ever get rid of vg i mean i hope I they don't because obviously i like playing yeah. vgc but i don't think they'll get rid of it either but you know it's definitely going to get put on the back burner especially if unite eventually takes off but who knows but with the United as well. Hopefully it's all just one of those things where it is all for platforms. The better good. Kind of, yeah, all do well out of it and all of them kind of keep going and keep going at the same time. So none of them get left in the mud like, you know, uh, Pokin did. Yeah, that was sad. That, that was, was sad. sad. That was, yeah. But um, yeah, so that, that, was, that, that happened there with that this week. And uh, obviously if there's any Go Fanatics that watch this do let us know get in touch let us know more details about it because obviously neither me or scott are in the competitive scene or like really like i play goal quite frequently but i'm not really in the community as as to speak is at the forefront of it as much as i uh, as much as other people so um i do like to keep in the loop with things though as they're going on yeah i think why while we're sort of still talking about events and stuff i think it'd be good I did to mention that um, Regulation C has started now for it the has, EC. Um, has, those of you that play the video game um, know that similar to the CC as well, it changes. Recent, I mean, they've only they only introduced format changes often in a season quite recently, but whether or not you agree, I mean, I personally don't think they should change it that often, um, especially when we have such a short BGC season. Um, but... No. We've moved on to Regulation C, which includes the Ruin Pokemon. Let's hop over to our trusty source. It's trusty Cerebi. Cerebi. Uh, um, so yeah, it's uh, Battle Season 5 um, on ranked ladder and things like that, mate. And uh, yeah, running from 1st of April till the 30th of June, this rule set. Um, and all it is including is the, the Ruin Pokemon, the, the Ruin Legendary. So Wu Shen, uh, Shen Pao, 
Tinglu and Chi Wu. So they are the four Pokemon that have been introduced on top of the existing format, which was um, Regulation B, which they're coining it. Um, so the banned Pokemon, as you can see, is a much shorter list. So things like Charizard, stuff that we're getting from the Terra. Why is Quagsire banned? You can... Mate, you should watch my guides. You can get it. It's a trade Pokemon in the games. You can trade a... Paldean so why is it banned? For, oh, because well, it's regular. It's, yeah, because it's a regular one, yeah. So same with Zoroark, because it's like a gift. These are all the seven-star terror raids. Do you think, uh, so notice, as well. noticed how you, it says up to June 30th, isn't it, there? Do you yes. think for Worlds, do you think they'll change it before Worlds and then include no. those Pokemon? No, I think they'll keep it. The thing is, they might do, right? There's always the argument that Pokemon Home by the 30th of June, praying hope, that it hope should be compatible by, Jesus. by the 30th of June, because that is way beyond early 2023, right? So you would imagine Pokemon Home will be compatible by then. Then we're going to have access to way more Pokemon. It would make Worlds as a format way more interesting if you've got all the Hisuian Pokemon in there, you've got all of the other starter Pokemon. And I guess the problem with it is that if you, you probably don't, you have to have you won't, we're not getting a new game next year right we're going to have the DLC, DLC so in, in order that, yeah. if you want to have any, a different format next season you can't really have an unlock Dex now that's um, what I think yeah I think so, it'll be national Dex next season yeah 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 but maybe they just add a few other Pokemon in say yeah you can use the Hisuian Pokemon I don't know what they're going to do but I think they might just plan. leave it regulation C until the end of well, the thing is that contradicts is I it believe the regulation C will be the rule set for worlds. Excuse the me. thing that will contradict it is if we got into season six, which is battle ranked season six, which would be they change that on the 1st of July. And they say everything's allowed now from Pokemon Home that you can actually legally access in Scarlet and Violet through Pokemon Home this transfer. Every and, so every Pokemon will be a national dex almost. It won't be a national dex because you're going to get national dex will be when you get like everything from the DLCs as well. So, it, you know, there'll be stuff in the DLCs that hasn't been revealed yet. So they'll be like the new Pokemon. But come July the 1st, say national dex is now the rule set and they I'm don't not. change the rule set for worlds. Yeah. And then no one's sense. got it. This is my problem. Like, and then none of the players have got a, a, an official platform to actually practice. Yeah, on, that is Which has happened in the past. And it could happen, so I don't. I don't know, mate. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Hopefully it's Regulation C just dragged over until the end of August. Because what would it be? July, August, September. The next rule set will be till September. So then it would be the end of September. So you start in the new rule set in October after that for season. That would be season seven, which would then be make sense in October to say right, it's going to be National X from now on. And then you could add in, if you were still wanting to change the rule set throughout that season, you could add in just the DLC Pokemon after the DLC's launch. So the next rule set, which would be December, which would be series C, yeah, season eight, which would be, let's add in all the new DLC Pokemon from DLC one. Yeah, because I added in Sword and Shield, that's how you got Urshfu, right? Because Urshfu was yeah. really popular. Yeah. And that was, I mean, that was an Isle of Armour or whatever, yeah, that, one, of the, one of the DLCs. That was Isle of Armour, so, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So. first one, yeah. Um, and then you had a bunch of other Pokemon that were included in the Isle of Armour that, that were then in the regulation. So you had like things like Politoed is something I remember being introduced in the Isle of Armour. There was a bunch of other Pokemon as well. And then Crown Tundra obviously came in and then had even more Pokemon like Mama Swine and stuff like that. And then all the legendary Pokemon after that. So they could do it like that, I guess. I just wish they would just have a rule set for the entire season rather than chopping and changing. It's like personal preference, of course. I just prefer to have no. a rule set for way longer where it can develop and really develop rather than having it for two or three months and then it's just starting to get really interesting and then they change the rules like again and then it starts all over again so i mean I it makes sense in things like the tcg i think it makes sense but yeah. like with the vg i just i mean like you said by having um you know a season long format that doesn't change towards the end of the season you get some really funky stuff because okay people have been like i need to start running 
you know, all of a sudden a really offensive Pokemon is now super bulky with assault vest or, you know, you're running specific things to encounter. A lot of people do that anyway, but, you know, it gets like the specifics get really niche towards the end because these top level players are like, I need to find a way to counter this for worlds. I'm going to run assault vest ground on you know, with Trick Room or something, you know, just because something completely different to the start of the format. Because um, yeah. it, it means that you are kind of, I guess, restricted in the sense that you are, you know, you're only, re- you're only allowed to use the only po- the Pokemon that you have access to. But I guess it kind of forces you to be more creative, especially towards mm. the end of the season where everything's become stale. And, you you know, you have to come up with something that, you know, isn't just like Sashin, Landers Thunderous, you know, Kogel Brown and just like all the standard stuff. So I, I personally, I am with you with that. I wouldn't mind like a, maybe like a mid season adjustment, but yeah, not, not like switch. a free, yeah. free format changes, especially when we only start in January for VGC. It yeah. just doesn't make any sense to me. So. Because like the two regionals I've been to this year, it's like both of them have been different rule sets and both of those rule sets have been like ending a week after that regional I've been to. And it's like, Maybe it'll be different of... when the locals come back. Because especially without <laughs> locals, they're even more dumb. Because it's yeah. like, how are you going to get any practice for this? As mm. new format happens, how are you going to get practice for this regional? Like you said, the one regional that you're going to during that format, how are you going to get practice for that? So it makes yeah. even less sense. Exactly. No, I completely agree with you, mate. I think a mid-season format change would be great. It would be fine. It keeps it fresh then because there are all going to be certain sections of the the community that are going to get bored with that rule set. I didn't like it to begin with. So at least with a mid-season rotation, then hopefully those players can come in. You're never going to please everyone either. But then it gives a lot of room for kind of development of the format, like you said, you know, um, and, and things to go forward in a way where it's not going to be, oh, we're just changing now and you've got to learn this new way to play and Have yeah, fun. and keep going like that. Yeah. So I don't know, mate, but the, the trend at the minute seems to be every three months. And I, I also don't another thing, changing, right? but like, like to mention, you also get like developments of individual teams. And yeah, one of, of the things that I really enjoyed doing in 2019, probably my most successful season is running the same team the entire season because it really allows you to get into the nuances of the team. You know, yeah. really what I mean for me, as someone who's not really good, that good at the game, who doesn't practice as, as much as other people, to be able to play the same team with a few tweaks here and there is this so, it's like confidence inspiring going into events because you're like, you know, exactly what you're going to do. Okay, the match was might change slightly, but it's just having confidence going into an event makes a world of a difference to your enjoyment, to the way you play, you know, to how well you do. You know, it's just, I, I just think. That is one of the reasons I think arguments why why it shouldn't change, but I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. Yeah, you know what I want to like. I keep no, I do. Stuff, so. I mean, well, yeah, the, I've got a lot of opinions on it. We could do a dedicated show on this for sure at some point. On the back of that, though, mate, uh, the other news in the competitive world this week was the announcement of updating championship oh, yes. for online events. Now, this is online. Wild. This is. Didn't it really used wild. to be like thirty for first place. I think it was sixty. I think and now it's one sixty. Yeah. Now it's one sixty. It's the equivalent of a regional for coming first in an online tournament. Best. You of could cheat with this. So this is what I don't understand because I thought that's what their argument <laughs> before was like. You know, they're not giving out high CP powers because technically you could literally just pay someone to do it for you. Mm. Not that you know you probably a struggle to find someone to do it, but like. Well, there's Gorson, isn't it? Gorson, especially in you know. the younger in the younger scene, right? If you're in seniors oh, yeah. or juniors, right? And you're an adult and you play, and your son plays, you'll be like, "I know how to play this game way better than you do," do you know? And just like win. Yeah, I think so that, that is, that is a, a downside huge problem of it. with it. Yeah, a massive. I don't know how you get around that either. I don't think you can online. And it's best of one as well. I just, yeah. well, I actually, it's one of the yeah. one things I did agree with that they've done. They, they've done for a long time is that okay yeah the cb powers aren't great but you know if you do well it's a nice bit of cp mm. but also at the same time if people are cheating then it doesn't really matter because you know it's not it's, the, the, the payouts aren't no exactly these are now, impactful though yeah, yeah these are impactful these are big numbers this is a regionals level win 
yeah and i think this is the disparity between this change and then the 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 championship point payout for regional level events it just seems so wrong they 100 percent after world they need to rework the cp structuring for a lot of things for everything. particularly for everything. particularly the changes i think they should make they need to change um i i do agree with people that um locals shouldn't count towards day one uh day two invites and count towards day one you don't you don't think so no, I think why I don't know why there would be a problem with that. I think if you've got a best limit, a best finish limit on local events, yeah. then mm. what's the issue there? True, true. No, I, think that is, I forgot about the beer. No, I forgot about that. Because yeah. normally it's a two, right? It was no, two. normally like PCs are normally like five, mid seasons are normally two or three, and I think that's fine. Like but honestly, I, I think people's argument, but again, you can make the same argument about regionals. Unfortunately, it's just location. I think some people argue that some places they have, uh, Italy used to be one where they would have like events every weekend. And some people would be like, oh, well, my, I live in this tiny town and there aren't any events there. Well, like, well, yes, that is, you know, technically not fair, but at least this way, again, I guess either way you do it, but like everyone is, it is location based, but everyone is on a level playing field. So you could go to as many re- like locals as you you can. I mean, we've got some great stories of our friends going to locals <laughs> in other countries and yeah. stuff. You know, just 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 for the trying to get the CP. So I honestly I, think, mate, I think like, they should stay. But I do understand the argument for not. I think it just comes back to like the whole too. restructuring of the championship points. To be honest, because I think like you restructure the championship points in a way where. You your best finish limits are maxed out on your locals, but even if you win everything at, from those best finish limits, it's not enough to. It can be enough to get you a day one invite, but it can't be enough to ever get you in a position where just on locals alone you're going to get a day two. And I think that's yes, where the structure yeah, right. come in to to make it like more fair. But I don't think players should be punished in a way where they're attending locals and performing well, and it's not contributing. What you have to remember as well their is inter- their season as an overall. You're hold, right. Do you know what I mean. One of the other arguments is, and again, it does happen because I'm not like I've definitely been to a few events where there've been like a couple oh, of people. We know stories, mate. We know stories, <laughs> but. Also, if you live in somewhere like the UK, the PCs and MSSs that we, me and you used to go to were stacked AF. And so oh, yeah. people's arguments, you know, have been like PCs are easy to go to. Like we just said, sometimes you can go to ones, some and they're not there. But other times in certain places, especially the UK, they can be very stacked. I'm talking about like we have had mid-season showdowns where we've had like 30 people, but then like 15 of them. Like we're just like, but then you've got like most of the people that are good, the best players in the UK. Sorry, is what I'm trying to say. That are also there, as Mate, well as we've some had mid seasons. And, and I know you've been at them. They've been like sixty plus players in a mid season. That's, that's what I mean. It's wild. So that argument yeah. is true, but also not true. It does again. Unfortunately, come back to location. But for us, mm. particularly, because we we don't really have as many of them in the UK. I think as other places because in like places like Italy where you've got a way more structured local scene, you've got way more choices for players to kind of attend and go to different events. Whereas in the UK, I feel like we were kind of, especially the last season before locals got taken away, you kind of limited to very select number of places that you could go to for your locals. So they were always going to be stacked for that concentrated kind of core of players that were attending all these events, chasing invites day two day one whatever so it was always going to be like more difficult you know but i think you're going to get that scenario in a lot of different places where can you not, get it's a bit of scarcity uh, isn't it i'm getting good similar. i'm just getting like flashbacks to locals now like you get all these weird memories and playing in like these f- fucking freezing cold halls and <laughs> like you know oh, try really? running back for lunch because you've you know you've gone out for Mackies for too long and you're trying to get back and you know I just just some of them other ones we've been to have been like so cold I mean one of them I was recovering from jaw surgery I just remember being like in so much pain but I wanted to play I think I was sitting on your lap or Terence's lap or someone's lap and I was just like I don't want to be here but I want to play Pokemon <laughs> and then you know, there's this like picture of me at a local I'm like, because this one of them was like, the seniors and juniors were like were thrown in with us because we didn't quite have enough. 
and like I've got green hair and it's look like at Christmas and I've got this like Christmas hat on and like I'm so depressed like I must have been playing like really bad I'm playing this junior and I'm, like this is a picture of me with like a frown on and I'm just like clicking buttons but I just did not want to be there look like a Christmas tree playing Pokemon I look like a Christmas tree playing Pokemon <laughs> it was like yeah. it was like that but again I mean we've got we could do a whole episode on like stories mm. just travelling to events because I mean you've probably got way more than me but I've definitely had again one of the main reasons that I play competitive is just the experiences and the people we get to meet is just like next to none so mm. there's not many hobbies you can do you know there isn't there isn't it's particularly there. like or at least accessible esports where you can compete at this level and travel yeah. around the world Um, so yeah Back to the original point, they do need restructuring, regionals in particular, especially if they continue to stay the same size. Yeah. Um, because now we're looking at regionals that was the size of what EU, like the international um, championship ones were when they first died, you know. I think the first year we had the EUIC, which is the event that's coming up, if you guys don't know. It's a, they used to, we used to have um, nationals. Um, so you used to have the locals, which were called PCs and mid-season showdowns. Those were like low CP payouts, so 30 for the PC and then 50 for mid-season. Then you'd have your regionals and then the big one and then there was normally your nationals. Um, and every country would, well, most countries that had a decent scene would have um, a nationals. Italy used to have one. We always used to have one. Did they have one Spain, in Germany? France, Spain, Germany. Yeah, they all had Well, them. it used to be normally, it used to be, it originally started with UK nationals, France or Paris would normally be the place where it was held. And then you would have uh, Spain, Madrid and uh, Germany. So there would normally be like four uh, per season for Europe. So they'd be a U European national championships. And then Italy got one. Um, Spain got taken away after, coincidentally, it got taken away around the same time as the debacle that happened with Ruben, um, <laughs> which is a completely something we're not we going to get into that, uh, in this episode. Podcast. But that happened, and then Italy became quite prominent. I think the attendance, the 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 amount of players that were turning up at the French national was not high, so that one got kicked. So it ended up just being UK, Italy, and then Germany, um, and then obviously it transitioned into the IC after that. Which I do miss nationals. I do miss yeah. nationals. Miss so the international miss. challenges, miss. Uh, miss. not challenges, championships are uh, instead of the nationals, we now have like regional ones so we have one for europe we have one for oceana um one for south america is south america yeah south america yeah one. and then one yep. for north america yeah asia has its own scene it's very mm. weird again we could talk about that on one episode because it's so they, interesting yeah it's very Japan interesting run their own their own, they're on, on circuit career they still their have that i think yeah, in asia. Do, yeah but yeah we won't go too deep into that yeah so um Anyway, so back to my point was the original EUIC, so the first one we had in Europe had 500. 2017. 2017. Mm -hmm. We went to that. They had like, it was in the 500s and that was mad. We'd never had events like that before. The numbers it was awesome. Mm. The following year, we had slightly less than that. So it'd gone down a bit in 2018. And then I don't know how the following, so that was, I don't know how 2019 went. That was in That was in Germany, wasn't Berlin. it? I was in Berlin because I went to that as well. It's probably around the same as the, the previous year, to be honest, mate. Because so you're that always going to get. Go, go on. on. No, go on. No, I, no I, was, I was just say, I was just going to say. So those are the numbers <laughs> we were used to be getting for these big tournaments. We're mm -hmm. now getting those numbers in regionals. Yeah. Which is like crazy because most regionals, you know, you'd be lucky. People would, like you'd want big numbers because you want like a larger top cut, not just like a top eight cut. Mm. But then now we're getting like five hundred people at a regional, which is crazy. Yeah. So they um they need to, they need to change. I mean, like EUIC now we're looking at like a thousand, thousand players, players, which I is think, like yeah. double, which is crazy. Um, so they definitely have to restructure the format next season, especially if it stays the way it is. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a good year to do it after the. They can always change it back, Japan. right? It doesn't. It doesn't matter if they change it for no. a large audience, and then it gets less popular again. Like just change it back. Yeah. It's not and I think the one thing I would say, with you know, obviously being a caster as well, I do have a little bit of knowledge about. I don't have all the knowledge, and I definitely I'm not an employee of Pokemon, so I don't know the ins and outs. But from mm -hmm. what I've heard, 
how things operate. It is very difficult to make changes in the actual circuit because of the layers of um, kind of sign off of anything that has to be done. So it goes from TPCI in America, it has to go all the way to Japan and then signed off by them. I guess it has, it has they, to, they have to do all, all the changes before the season starts. Yeah. And you That's know what? what? I say. think the, the one thing I would say is, you know, you've got people like Kay, you've got people like Chris Brown, and they are always, always wanting feedback and wanting to improve things. And we have seen massive improvements to the circuit over the, the you know, the last few years. And, you know, a lot of the things that do get implemented in the game aren't, aren't always down to them and they are aware of, of things that should be changed but maybe don't have any control still, over. They still play the games, right? They're not idiots. They know they know that if there's a problem, like even if they do work for Pokemon, they're going to be like, well... Yeah, but I think my, my point right? comes back to, I think a lot of people kind of that play the circuits and things like that think that, you know, all of the issues are down to them not listening or not being able to implement things quickly. But um, Yeah, like they don't know, know what the problems are. What I'm saying is I think they do know what the issues are and I think they are trying to make changes and I just think it is an, an easy process. And I think if that was communicated, I think it would make it a lot easier for the community to accept but yeah. i think because obviously it's a hard thing to come out and communicate because are you allowed to communicate certain things are you allowed to come out and say that this is the situation you know it's a difficult one to do but um i think yeah things are improving have been improving i think it's just a slow process and i think over the next few years hopefully things keep going in the direction that they're going um and play pokemon do listen so i think that's that's a big thing to keep in mind i think just have a bit of patience and although some things that are happening right now uh you might not agree with i don't agree with a lot of things I, and i'm quite vocal remember, about you, it you can't but please think, everyone that's, oh, that's, that's the other that's, thing, that's yeah. The thing. Someone's always going to be upset with something that is made, changed, or whatever, or something isn't working. I mean, they can, so. make, they can make a change yeah. that's really good for, like, TCG and Go. That would be fantastic if you were them player, but it could massively impact mm. you, see, you know. That, that yeah. could easily happen. So, you know, it's going to happen at some point. Oh, like I said, we've seen it happen, but it, that is... You're just not going to please everyone. So... It's impossible. It's impossible. It impossible. It's impossible. Um, yeah, so that's that anyway, mate. It's good. I like that. I like that, mate. I like, um, I like it a lot. While, while we're on the subject of uh, Scarlet and Violet, I'm just going to throw up this. Oh, the little, see the little advert? Can we watch the little the chunk thing that they made? Uh, you I got haven't that seen up? it, mate. I haven't you seen haven't it. Seen the, okay, I'll send it to you. I see the advert. Why, why talk, talk about that and I'll get the little advert up? Yeah, so now there is a, a mystery gift running at the moment in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for a flying terror type Lechonk that you can get in your games. I don't think there's anything really exclusive about the Lechonk other than it has got the flying terror type, which isn't something that is impossible to get in games anyway, but it is available at game stores around different game stores worldwide obviously canada us it'll be gamestop uk it's going to be it game and gamestop in many other places game mania over in belgium in the netherlands and wow. micromania in france uh, so they're all the dates they're running to about mid april so if you're in your local store you can ask for a code from the uh, cashier or employees that work there and they should give you a little code that you'll be able to get this free mystery you get a gift card gift. as well i think do you, get oh, do you get it do you think in game you get a little card unless it's just that thing there um i'm sure i saw someone post about on reddit today um it might just that looks there. like something might be that wrong. you get and that might have the code on the back of it maybe maybe Maybe. I know they did that with the um, the which were the last ones that they give cards up for. I think Xerneas in Nivaltal, uh, at game where you got them and there was a little scratch thing on the back and you got the code from that. So that was what they did for that. So maybe they're doing something similar. I'll just send uh, you the um, the link to the little video they made. What, 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 on Twitter. What? Twitter. Mm -hmm. Twitter. I mean, it's on the official Pokemon channel. It's, it's just like... Is it? I don't know if they're trying to tease something but then like Pokemon together don't know oh, what yeah. I might... they're trying to do if they're trying to do something Whoa. or it's just uh, like just you know Chonk Le Chonk everyone loves Le Chonk type thing so everyone loves Le Chonk I mean it is to... adorable it's like a little pug what have you done oh, got oh rid of God. you sorry mate 
<laughs> that was right. like solo solo me for a minute sorry it's kicking you off Hello again sorry, yeah <laughs> right here we go here it is yeah it's That's, really cute uh, full screeny the mighty new pokemon has arrived with an incredible sense of adventure it's so cute snout. it's very wholesome isn't it i just they just i just know strength. how to I like I want like a Lechonk plushie now. Like I feel like it's on like a similar <laughs> level to like a Bidoof or something. They've it's got just got you. that. It's just they just got me, man. I mean that's it. But I mean it was enough to be like, damn, I want my own Lechonk. That was nice. I liked it. I enjoyed just, that. Just cute Thank little you one. That over. You're Where were we? We were Lechonk in it, weren't we? Yeah. So, um. Oh man, this is playing. I was like, who's that talking? This is a little video in the corner there. Oh, confusing. So, confusing. Um, yeah, that's Lechonk. And, um, yeah, go out and get it. Get it in your games where you can. I will. I don't know if I'm going to be even near a game before the 14th of April, so I will, I'll try. If I can get extras, I'll give some out on the next pod. Oh, mate, remember the when day. I used to give, like, good. we're going back now, but, like, events inside of, like, gay, like Toys R Us and stuff, yeah like to get like i mean you'll remember it more but like i never really got a chance as part of that era but it's like the only way you could get dark cry and shame in like all the yeah. other people, like, when you had to yeah. go i remember when i was young i was like just constantly trying to look up like how can i get this pokemon but then the events would have oh, finished mate. i'm like i can't get a shame in them i don't want <laughs> yeah. it it's, it's so impossible annoying. to get it now yeah but, there i remember are actually the, web like websites now that replicate the codes for the games so you can oh, go onto a website cool. and if you want to play it get it in pokemon diamond and pearl you can get the shame in they do it for that's you. It's really cool. That is amazing. I remember going to the 20... No, sorry. 2001 World Championships, red, blue, and yellow, and queuing up as a little me with my copy of Red and my Game Boy and getting a Mew from the trade event, from this like machine, this huge machine that they plugged into your Game Boy and then they traded you uh, a gift Mew and that was that was pretty cool and the best one that i ever did was the celebi tour i don't know when that was but it was just pre-release of crystal and they did a tournament on gold and silver and uh, we begged me and my brother scott also called scott not you scott but Damn also it. called scott um you're my other brother we begged, no begged, begged our parents to take us down because it was like in Leeds, uh, the the cell, the closest one. We begged, and my dad was like, "Okay, I'll think about it. If you do some jobs for me this week, we were off school, so I think it was like an Easter break or something. So we had two weeks off. So this whole week, we'd been doing all of these jobs for my my dad because he was the only one at home. My mum was at work that week, so we were like cleaning the windows. We were like." scrubbing his shed like repainting the shed all of these really crap jobs that we were doing all this week and i mean he, he definitely milked it right and it got to friday night and we'd been asking him all week and he was like well we'll see by the end of the week we'll see how you get on at the end of the week got to friday night and uh, we were sitting down for dinner and we're like okay dad so are we are we, are we going tomorrow he's like nah i don't i don't think we will and we're like what what you like you literally literally enslaved you us have... for an entire week and he was like nah we'll go and i'm like come on you. like <laughs> you but he obviously it went on for a lot longer than just that that momentary second but um yeah so we went down to that anyway and me and my brother had actually built our teams in game uh gold and silver hadn't been out too long like the competitive scene has sort of develop uh singles uh teams and things like that it started to develop i can't remember what we played on online. Was it Pokemon Online or Shoddy Battle or something like that that you could practice online? Anyway, we built our teams in game, and uh, we were we were feeling good about going down, doing well at this tournament. And uh, we got there, and uh, we got on the line. And we got talking with people about their teams. Still felt good, thinking this is going to be this is going to be a good day here today. And then they announced. Today's tournament is going to be on Pokemon Stadium 2. We were like, brilliant. We can play on Pokemon Stadium 2. It hadn't been released yet. Get to play on that. And you'll be using rental teams only. <laughs> we were like, what? 
and I got uh, so you had to beat your first opponent to get into the tournament. Got randomly paired up. I managed to do that, and then you uh, obviously it was single elimination. Uh, GS Cup rules, so three versus three, rent of Pokemon that you could beat. And um, I got cheesed out in like round two by what was it that flinched me? I was using one Buffet because I was like, I was like, one Buffet will be really Hi, good in this tournament. And uh, I got cheesed out by this guy who just flinched me for like six turns in a row. Flinch, 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 flinch. So I couldn't counter or mirror oh. or anything. And then that was that. And then uh, it was very sad. But the whole takeaway from this, why I'm telling you this, is because everyone that got into the tournament got given a special copy of Pokemon Crystal, which had 20 Ce Celebes, 20 gift Celebes on the cartridge, right? So it was a full copy of Crystal and 20 Celebes on the cartridge. Um, and what you had to do was you had to trade. There was They give you a list, of, like a sheet of Pokemon as well, where you had to trade each Celebi with friends, supposedly with friends, and you had to trade them with um, friends for specific Pokemon. So you had to trade like one Celebi for Charizard, one for Snorlax, all these different things. And you had to trade them all away uh, for these specific Pokemon, have them in your box, and then you sent this copy of Crystal away and they would send you a real copy of Crystal back in the post which is pretty cool. So what I just kept it. Well, what I did was I traded them all to my copy of Pokemon Red. Oh, no, no, my copy of Gold or Silver, whichever one it was at the time. So I traded them all for these specific Pokemon. I did it, and then I sent the cartridge away, and they actually sent me a copy of Crystal. So I've got my Gold or Silver cartridge, wherever it is, my parents, has all these Celebes on it. These, um, yeah, so you just traded the other Pokemon for like anything? And I didn't really have any any anyone locally around that time that that still played. You know, the crazy kind of died down then um, around where we lived. So there wasn't really anyone that that played that we knew that would even want one of these Celebes. So you just traded with yourself, like, just traded with ourselves, yeah. Um, and then you know they, what I really sent us a, a copy. Yeah, that was cool. That was one of the coolest things that I did. That's yeah. sick. I miss the cool cartridges. Yeah, the, we don't the get that anymore. No, like we don't. Say, we used to get coloured cartridges. Crystal's cartridge is Crystal awesome. It's shiny. It's so it's sick. It's got glittery. It. It's got yeah. It's it. Amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Just those little Emerald favorite. as well. The green one. I it's love like that cartridge. Given up with like making them look, just even like a shiny sticker makes it look so cool. Like yeah. when, I, when you look, when you see like again. It's black Emerald. and white, like like a hologrammy sticker on it, I think. I'm trying to think. No. Black and white too? No. Mm -mm. Not that was I had. No, nope. and go check. I don't think it was. I've got I've got the box for black and white too. I think up here. Give me two seconds. Entertain the people while I just go and get this. Hello. It's not like I'm going far, but you know. Oh my god, he's completely disappeared. What do we do? Uh, uh, I'm wearing a Pikachu onesie. Um, yeah. I I'm love back. It. Don't worry, back. people. That was quick. Oh. I was got on his own by himself for too long. Bad things will happen. So this is a box. So the box is not in any way glittery. I mean, the art looks nice, but the art normally looks cool. No, you're right. You're right. No. It's just normal. So a bit sad about that. There's a Mega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Are they not blue and red cartridges? Mm -mm. Did they really just stop doing it in uh -huh. DS land? Uh-huh. Are you sure? Are you sure? Omega they went grey. They are grey. Are they? With a stick I on. I should it. know this, but I want to say that they're red. But they're obviously not. That is sad. Yeah, I mean, they started out with coloured cartridges. Red was red. Blue was blue. Yellow was yellow. Yeah, but they didn't gold was gold. Gold. gold was gold. It. Silver was silver. Crystal was the cool looking. Crystal colour. It was like a terrestrialised crystal, wasn't it? And then um, and the ruby, ruby sapphire, sapphire, emerald, emerald, far red, leaf green, blue, same green. Thing again. Yeah, diamond and pearl. They were like, yeah, no, we don't care anymore. Diamond and pearl dark, were grey, weren't they? Yeah, cartridge. Yeah. It's not, no, why? No, I'm sure. Why? That's such a good point, mate. Even though, like the boxes, I know they do like the um, get the steel even cases. Stadium. Stadium two was like a gold 
like a, a, a like a yeah, glittery gold yeah, yeah, yeah. cartridge. Yeah. Yep. Lazy, mate. Lazy. It's the little things as well that the That's what I mean. fans like. We like it makes those just, little details. One is something to collect, and two, it just makes it a bit more exciting. The only thing they do is get, like the, the still back versions, which aren't. There's nothing. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're just yeah. still. They should be crap. Yeah. Rubbish. I'm not a fan of those. I've got. I've got them because I buy the double packs. Not like. Damn. <laughs> what was that? What my, was that? My new cable album just fell down. Oh my god! It's a sign. Oh. What the Ready fuck? to be. Did you just break? No, it's fine. We're all good. Hopefully. Is it all right? All good. We're all good. All good. I can't even remember what I was about to say. It was quite... Uh, uh, I'm sure it was relevant to the topic at the time. But never oh my mind. God. Ah! Hey, sorry. Sorry. Panic over. If you, just... could buy the, if you could buy the DLCs as a cartridge, would you buy them or would you just download them? Game like with the game, so you could buy Scarlet and Violet with the DLC, or like already like downloaded, up, updated to the update with the DLC as a cartridge. Would you buy it, or would you just say, "Now, nah, just get the download"? Because I've already got it the base. Depends game. on if again, like you'd have to give me a reason to download it. Like, I mean, to download Violet, it or to buy it? No, as in like, sorry, 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 to buy it. You'd have to give me a reason because I mean, normally I I've always bought games. Because I don't see the point in downloading them. Someone bought me Scarlet and Violet as a downloadable code, so I was like, "That's fine." But I mean, they're not really giving me like going back to what we said. Like, what's the incentive to buy a physical cartridge? Like, because I'm never going to sell it. Because that's my argument normally for having a physical cartridge. Yeah. So I'm just like, well, w- what do I do then? You know. So no. Basically, my answer is I'll just download it, even if I had the physical copy. They would have to go some way in order to make me want to buy it. Yeah. So. I just want. Yeah. No. What would you do? Um, I think as a collector's piece, I would probably buy it, but I'd probably keep it sealed as like a because I've got I've got Sword and Shield sealed because I really enjoyed those games. So I'm like, I do have quite a few Pokemon games sealed because like, eventually I would like to get them graded so I can have them as like display pieces. <sighs> So I think in that case, I'd be like, yeah, I'll buy those ones as my kind of part of my seal collection for those. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm very tempted to buy, this is a total tangent, I'm very tempted to try and get myself the um, the Legend of Zelda OLED Limited Edition. Yeah. For Tears of the Kingdom. It does it's look nice. so nice, so nice. The dock, the dock just completes it. The yeah. crappy dock completes yeah. it. Anyway, mate, we're we're going off on tangents all over the shop here. We need I to think we need to talk about this new TCG set before we this end. This one, this is one five one. This is going to be worth so much money. I'm telling you now. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty obvious to anyone with a brain and knows anything about Pokemon. This is just going to, yeah. I'm very excited. Well. It is. I'm it is excited. 151. You can kind of self-explanatory. It's going to feature all of the original 151. I Pokemon. want. When and does come out? Do we know? Interestingly, I think uh, May, 16th of May, I think. Uh, interestingly, though, it's the first set to have Kadabra in it for the longest time because obviously yeah. there's all those issues with Kadabra, um, with the lawsuits about not being able to use Kadabra because of, is it Yuri oh, Geller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yuri Geller thing. So this one's actually going to have it in. It's going to have Kadabra in it, um, which is which is pretty awesome. So um, there even details it here. I want to get that in Japanese as well as the English set. I yeah, think I think it'd be really definitely cool. Definitely going to go that as the Japanese one to keep. So, it'd be good. Let's see, when when is it set to come out? I want to see the 16. I don't know if it says here, does it? Um, when will the set release? 16th of June in Japan. 16th of June, okay. So, it was a little, I was a month month out. No okay. word in the UK. So, yeah, very cool. I'm very mm-hmm. excited for it, mate. I think mm-hmm. it'll be a cool set. I wonder if it'll just be a side set rather than a, an yeah. expansion to anything that's like current. Maybe a holiday or set. Or something. Yeah, maybe, maybe, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, so there is that, which is quite exciting this week. What else we got to talk about? We've got um, the Switch Two. Is, you're talking about Switch Two. The saga continues with the Switch Two. There is maybe more details you mentioned Connor. something about backwards compatibility, possibly. 
which we talked did, about. Yeah, which we talked about last week on the pod last week. We did talk about you brought up the point. It's a very good point as well, mate. And um, one of the things that I would say about this is Connor, who we covered last week, talking about the new Tegra chip, also kind of updated again. Uh, according to my source, next gen Nintendo Switch dev kit have been sent to developers. So um, that is big because now the developers are going to be able to probably come in soon then making games for the new system, which is I'm calling it next year. So they'll announce it this I, year, coming out yeah, next year. That's I think early 2024. Um, yeah, I think that's probably like around February, March time, right? Do you think? I've honestly got no idea on actual dates. It's I don't soon, know when did they drop the original Switch? Was it in the Jan- Was it like January or anything like that? Maybe special? it feels too like it obviously feels optimal time to drop it just before Christmas so people buy it for Christmas, right? But it feels too late now for them to. Is it too late now for them to announce it to market it unless they do Christmas? it for the following Christmas? So the original Switch come out on March third. Oh, so they're probably going to do... So maybe another there. March release, you could be right. Mm. About that. Yeah, it's interesting because there is a lot of chatter down here, I think, about uh, backwards compatibility. Um, do you think there's the same cartridges? Uh, if it ends up having having backwards compatibility, my guess would be a slot that fits original Switch games and Switch 2 games would have a Why slight change, change in shape. Why change so the Use the same one. No, it's they're saying it would be the similar one, but you know, between uh, DS and 3DS, oh, it's just to, that had, notch. Yeah, but why? Why change it? It doesn't make any I it, guess because then you can't use Switch 2 games on the Switch. So you have to uh, only use them on the Switch 2. So that would make sense for that. So I'm there stupid. is that. Yeah. <laughs> and then the only other thing I've really got that I want to mention this week was uh, Riddler Coup. Riddler Coup, our good old friend Riddler Coup. So if you aren't aware of Riddler Coup, he is a very reliable leaker within the community. He puts out riddles, which are in the form of kind of leaks, uh, always very accurate, and it's left up to the community to kind of decipher them. But this is a very interesting one um, that he put out earlier this week. You're uh, both version info here's the first batch of mons who are gonna wear special hats or masks in sudachi which is the where the the first dlc will be located got a clue and not a surprise her huh? so it's interesting that all of these are the ones that are referring the masks are referring to this which is the scene in the dlc trailer which obviously um depicts obviously pikachu eevee masks as well as the what we imagine are the other starters, but it would make sense that all of the seven star terror raids are somehow tied into this special feature as well. You mm. know what I mean, so I thought that was pretty interesting, and it's always going to be something that Charizard and Pikachu, big fan favorite, well, big Game Freak favorite, big fan favorite. I mean, Jesus, <laughs> yeah, um, huge fan gonna, favorite. They're going to get everything, aren't they? Because they're they're so popular uh, with Game Freak particular but i just thought it was interesting to know i think soul silver who's um a leak analyst goes on to say a little bit more as well and the first dlc i am all but certain that the three new pokemon will be able to get uh all pawns mask or have their own masks and transform into something close to what we saw in the live action trailer they kind of look like power rangers but i'm excited to, I as to see the uh, redeem these designs for me so yeah well how big the dlc will be as well I think it'll be big, mate. I really do. I think it'll be. I think it'll be a good size, um, because it's coming out pre- quite late, isn't it? It is coming out mm-hmm. quite late. I do have some extra things for this week for you. Um, there's a couple of after last week. You showed me that advert. Now I don't know whether I show you a short, a shorter one this week because we are yeah. getting on for time. No, yeah, um, I think or if a I one. a shorter one. Yeah, just because we're nearing the hour mark now, so I'm not going to go for too long. That. Yeah, and I don't really want to spam on with the, the the longer the longer advertisement. Actually, let me just let me just see how long this advertise. I think this one is is pretty long, but I have been hunting around. This is only four minutes. Is that too long? Too long to probably watch and then talk about. Yeah, so this is short because we can save it for next week. Give some to save it. Look okay. to. That one was quite special. We can have a segment. Um, I think we should have a segment for, for Pokemon adverts. Right. We can, so, yeah. I did find this one as well. I've got quite a few, actually. I've been really 
This is only 30 seconds, right? Okay. Okay, wait, I'm ready. There, wait, there, I'm wait, ready. There. ready. Okay. Uh, can you see this? Not yet. You can't, right there. I'm going to just, I'm just going to pop this open. Okay, all right. It, it's not so much weird. I d you're not going to be able to hear it, are you? No, do I need to hear it? Um, probably not. Okay, okay. So it is kind of weird. I never even knew this existed, but um, well, I'll I'll just I'll just okay. press it. And, yeah, mm -hmm. here you go. Attention, Pokemon fans! Get ready for Pokemon Live at the Fox Theater. <laughs> now you can be there as Damn. well. Damn, that's a Pokemon <laughs> musical. If I've ever seen one. It's the only place to see a brand <laughs> what? Pokemon that looks. Does it look powers. weird? You can meet Brock. Mm. I mean, that Pikachu looks freaky, man. Man, yeah. Jesus. Well, I feel like if you were a child, you'd be like, yes! If you like Pokemon, you want to go see that. <laughs> How good is this? How bad it is this? There's some things in here that I just need to go back and say. I mean, I don't know what's going on with Jesse and James there. They, uh, they're yeah. not really... They're not really... I mean, uh, the outfits look good. Then, uh, I, I don't know. There's Ash. Okay. Brock. <laughs> okay. There's something that's uh, accurate. Misty. They're not the most accurate. I mean, look at this hypno at the front. Bro, that is literally things of nightmares. What the hell? We've got a victory bell there. That this looks, is... that's probably the most accurate thing. That looks good. Pidgey, is that the Pidgey? Is that Pidgeotto? It's like Articuna. The back no, it's like Articuna because there's Zapdos next to it. No, the, that's Pidgeotto there. Dude. Oh, no, you're right. Okay, right. It has to be. It can't be Articuno. I mean, it no, no, might no, you're be right. it look, going on the basis it. of how bad this is, right? And then, yeah, Zapdos there. Why is Pidgeotto the same size as Zapdos, though? I'm sure that, yeah. Anyway, was there a picture of Misty? We've seen the other two. Can Let's we get, get forward. Misty in here? There's the luck. Great headshot. I don't think there is one of Misty, you know? How do you feel about this, mate? Have I done well in finding something for us? Yeah, this, this is weird. I don't know I wonder, what I wonder this if we can is. find actual What food. is that? Yeah. Oh, a, team well, get... a Team Rocket robot? It gets better, mate. It gets better because I didn't just find this random advert and leave it there. I found a full recording of the entire no. stage show. The, the one, one hour, 50 minute stage show of this Pokemon Live. No so, way. <laughs> we'll have, to, we'll have to skim through that one episode. This is the, look, look at this, him, Ash in his bedroom with his little... <laughs> this oh Pikachu. my god, it's so freaky. <laughs> it's the same size as Ash. And then, yeah, we've got we've got all this... Uh, there must be like battles going on throughout it. And then Team Rocket obviously doing a thing. How do you do I a am, battle? I'm is so that, confused that how you do Oak? a battle. Yeah, I don't know. Because the Pokemon... Are, yeah, that yeah. must be Professor Oak there. Uh, so yeah, we've got all of this. All of this good, wholesome... I don't know what's going on, but <laughs> you know what? If this was still gone now, I would pay to go and see this just just for this. Just yeah. to be like, this yeah, would be fun to go there. and watch. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So this was one of the things I found, mate, this week. Uh, but I do have the, uh, if anyone wants the entire one hour, 50 minute show. It's quite a long show as well, right? For a stage it's show. It's a long show. It's a long stage show, yeah. If anyone wants the link, I will uh, I'll pop it down in the description, I guess. Maybe maybe on, maybe we do a stream where we watch the whole thing. Maybe that would, that would be actually That'd be really, really cool. cool. That'd be cool. That would be a really cool evening. A watch along. If people wanna if people wanna take part in that, maybe one Sunday we'll uh, we'll do a live stream and we'll watch it together. That would be that would be really good. Yeah, I can put my Snorlax onesie on to match your Pikachu one. Yeah, yeah, of course. We can get some popcorn and uh, we can we can watch this and see. See how what tales are unfolding in the uh, the world of Ash Ketchum, Brock, and Misty. With a there, oh, that, it is the picture that I've got the still of here is Ash's mum and Professor Oak. We might get some extra storylines that we've never ever known about before. But I thought it was funny that someone's got the whole stage show on 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 camera. It's classic, isn't it? Brilliant, brilliant, excellent. But that's, I think, everything this week, mate. I don't think there's anything else other than 
It's been really fun, mate. Thank you so much for taking time the time, mate. Flies by. Flies. Whenever I talk to you, you know what I mean. So flies. Gives we've got some good ideas, some pods coming up. Yeah. Again, we've got so many stories we could talk about. We've got we're gonna do an episode where we talk about someone was asking in the comments about our backgrounds with Pokemon. I think there'd be a really good one to go through because I know like Lee has a really sick background with Pokemon as he's touched upon today. So, and then I could talk about my experiences and then maybe we'll do an episode talking about like some of the stories we have as well because I think that'd be really, really fun as well. That would be, that's a nice idea, mate. I like, so, I like the idea of that. That'd be good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, keep the suggestions coming. If you've got ideas for what your topics specifically you would like to maybe that we haven't touched upon in this one you'd like to have covered in future weeks do let us know of course um but uh, i don't think there's much else that i want to add in just say thank you again to scott and thank you to the viewer uh you guys for um supporting the the pod because yes. we are in the early days and it is just it's we so did really well to do. we got like almost 1500 views which for a video podcast is really good like yeah, so especially considering for everyone's thank you so much for so, for the support we're um, going to keep so. it on the channel for now probably maybe for a couple of months and then we will yeah. mig- eventually migrate over to its own channel we just support want to get it settled board. first yeah get it um, set up get into a routine get a good consistency going with it get a good feel for how we're doing these and because we do eventually want to do the live ones as well integrated with these kind of like static ones that we're going to put out just every week uh, so we do want to mix up everything and uh, i think it'd be nice to get the viewers involved as well in them as well i think that'd be the nice part of it so that is the plan for the along the line and i've just jumped in and cut you off scott so i'm sorry i let you finish that waiting. was it no i mean you were basically going with what i wanted to say so thank you <laughs> just guys solid. for listening if you made it this far um yeah i mean i look forward to, to doing this again next week you we'll know? see you next week. Yeah. We'll see you right, next week. Sure. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. before we go, and I know I'm dragging it on, there is supposedly a little rumor going around that there's going to be some some uh, impactful Pokemon news coming out this coming week. So it might have already come out by the time of us putting this pod up on Wednesday. Might not have yet. So uh, there might be nothing at all, but there might be something really spicy to talk about next week. We'll have to wait and see, but definitely come by because if it has happened, we will we'll be, be talking, talking about, about it. Maybe. Yeah. All right, Scott, take care Thanks of yourself, then. mate. I'll see you next right. week. Everyone else at home, thank you so much. Bye-bye. In the next pod. Bye-bye. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be.